Well, it's that time of... Uh, I don't really say of the year, right? Because it's not really yearly. Well, it's time for your boy Amol to be back in the BBR. <laughs> yep, new season, stay uh, still out of me. And yeah, and sorry, just adjusting the volume of the music. Okay, yeah, okay, much better. <laughs> yeah, it's a draft analysis. I just go over the Pokemon. It's as simple as that. Also, it's not my pick, but can you say hi to Ice Q? He's right. He's right there. He's he's a, he's just a little. He's just being a little silly goose, silly penguin. It's not my first pick. I just wanted something to hide my first pick. So yeah, on this intro done now, we have to jump on. The, on well, ha what happened in the draft and what I was able to get? All right, so. Out of 16 people being here in the draft, I got 7th, which is, well, close to the middle, so not that great. But 7 meant I was allowed to get a 18-pointer of the draft. And the 18-pointers this time around are, well, it's it's interesting because they decided to do the decision to ban some Pokemon compared to the previous season. So Pokemon... Like, I'm, I remember the three bands I remember were Dragapult, Deoxy Speed, and Spectreer compared to the previous draft. So, yes. So basically, the 18 roster was then now comprised of Darkrai, Garchomp, Great Tusk, Iron Valiant, Palafin, Tornado Sterion, and Urshifu. And like you see, there's, se there's exactly seven of them. So even if the six people before me pick an 18 pointer, I will have an 18 pointer in my hand. But that doesn't mean I would have won it an 18 pointer. Like for sure, I would have not went Urshifu because I had it very recently. I, I, and if it was Tornado Terran, I wouldn't feel like using it either. And so way it came to, so basically it just remained the top, the just the five others I just mentioned. But maybe also, maybe not Garchomp, because I don't feel uh, about it right now either, so there's only at least three Pokemon. Like, originally, I wanted uh, Iron Valiant the most, like, before we even knew, like, the position and everything, because it's like a Pokemon I haven't used yet. It went first pick, so I can so I can say goodbye to this. I thought then Palafin next, because I haven't used it in a very long time. It also got picked. So... What I got instead? Well, like I said, it's an 18 pointer because I was able to get one. It's not one I thought. I mean, I f I was suspecting it would get my I would get my hands on it. I wasn't sure if I really, really, really wanted to go for it, but I decided. Sure, it's a Pokemon that's been around for a while, but it has never been really allowed until like recently. All right, and now I just uncoin the real peak and yeah, Darkrai. Is the Pokemon the first pick I have of the draft? Which I guess your opinion on Dark Cry will very matters, honestly. Because I can see why people would think that this is like a very good pick, but also some people are I could see some people being like, why did you waste your pick on this? Because like the only time I remember Dark Cry being used in draft, like at least recently in time. Was in like the was it the first or the second season of SPI? Was it? The, I mean, it was the season of SPI with actually, you know, no, no, it was the second. It was the second because the second had the 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 the, the Indigo this DLC. Uh, I know Aiden had it, but we didn't see really that good from Dark Cry. So some people like it was only Dark Cry was a radar of some people as a fraudmon, but despite that. I want Darkrai to be good. Like, sure, there is some flaw on the Pokemon because... I mean, I'm just gonna go over the flaws real quickly. That it's a Dark type, but it's a special attacker. Ex so this means he has to use Dark Pulse for a special stab. Sure, there's the chance of flinching, which is great with his high speed. But the power leaves something to desire. Like, AD, AD is not terrible. I would say it's the bare minimum as a stab move in terms of base power. And beside that, well, Darkrai gets a lot of coverage as well. So just think of like, you know, like your stuff like Slush Bomb, Focus Blast, Ice Beam. Yeah, 
also you know the st uh, status move as well. You have your combine or nasty plot. Could he sort them with, with a physical set? It does. It can then use knockoff as a physical stab. Also, you have status with the uh, thunder wave trick will always. You have the, uh, also the hypnosis as well because if you want something out of your ability, you need hypnosis or something else on your team to put so something to sip, uh, sleep. So yeah, I hope. I will make Darkrai look like an actually good Pokemon and not a fraud. I mean, I do have a little reputation that anything can work in my hand, but for some reason, the better Pokemon, the worse it could perform in, in my hands, and the worse the Pokemon, the better it will perform in my hands. I don't even know, maybe it's, it'll be psychic, uh, uh, psycho uh, psycho reverse psychology, where Darkrai is supposed to be good, but right now it's bad, so now people think it's bad, so it will be good in my hand. I, I don't know. So yeah, Darkrai is the first pick. And now it was time, for me, it was my turn again, to get my second pick. Obviously, from what my priorities I like to have in draft is of course a poison type. Especially a good poison type, but also a poison type that isn't, I mean, that is affected by the ground so you can absorb T-Spike to make my opponents less likely to bring T-Spike versus me. I did have Petra around last season which was very great. I thought about some alternative like Glamora or Iron Muff, which I thought were cool. Like Glamora gives some a lot of hazards. Iron Muff is just another fast special attacker that is very strong to pile on the offense with Darkrai. But I went fetch around anyway. <laughs> like it, it's just so good. Also, funny thing is that it was 13 point last season, but like then I just I just knocked some Sampy to Owen to tell him that. Petrarant needs to be way higher than that. I was ready for it to be a 16. I'm not joking. This thing is just very stupid to deal with. I can attest myself. But we were able also to go on reasonable with a 15 pointer instead. To put it at 15. So it, it was up from 2 points compared to the previous season. And despite that... I drafted it, so I could have technically just leave it at 13 and draft it, but no. I, Petron's strength needs to be recognized. <laughs> I mean, sure, it's, it's 88 across the board, except it's defense, which is 160, which is like absurd. Like, it's. If you think Pokemon like Skarmory or Tusapex are super tanky on the physical side, Petron beats them to that. Also, plus being a poison type, it's a ghost type, so it provides me a. Spam blocker for future Pokemon that can stop hazards for me. And also, it's just defensively, it's great to pair with Darkrai. Like, Darkrai, the three type Darkrai is weak against being, like, you know, bug, fairy, and fighting. Petra pretty much devours all of them because, you know, it's immune to fighting, it four time resists bug, and it's resist to fairy. I would say. At least, like, even though it, it has a regular resist to fairy, it can at least hit them for super effective. It's Moopool, very limited, but it has barely white needs. You know, like its signature move, Malignant Chain, which is pretty strong. It has a 50% chance to badly poison, to combo with Poison Puppeteer, to, to confuse them at the same time. It has. Uh, recover to stay healthy, a parting shot to pivot it around, potentially forcing clear amulets to block the parting shot, making them vulnerable to hazards. You have of course Shadow Ball X, Nasty Plot to get stronger. <laughs> I, I did I did use Defense Girl effectively once last season, so I'm gonna mention it again. So yeah. It's simple, but if there is someone who knows how to use Petra around in draft currently, it is me. And I will continue to do so because I love it when I don't have to prep against it. Alright, so we're already two picks in. And like usual me, I had no idea what to get next. But I did have, I mean, in the sense that I don't know 100% what I wanted. So I went into my instincts. I just searched for the Pokemon that fits who I am. And embrace my inner duck and draft a Quackwavel, which was also more than a year and a half since I drafted it, and it changed a lot since then. But yeah, we all know what Quackwavel does. He is known for those Moxie plus Aqua Step combo, which with the idea is that you use Aqua Step, which is a guaranteed speed boost, you knock out him, 
bam, Moxie plus attack, you just got a Dragon Dance for killing something. Pretty tempting. And of course, you are fighting type, so you get powerful close combat. And you, and since the DLCs, it got a lot of buff. Like, it got knockoff, it got triple axle. Technically, Fluctor is not that big of a buff because it got, it get, it got U-turn initially. But if you want uh, Fluctor for the Water Stab more than the U-turn buff coverage, it's there. Yeah, it's just a strong Pokemon that can potentially snowball. I'm gonna try and see if I can make other set other than the Snowball Crocodile to work. Like maybe like more to focus on utility because it's 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 typing is good. It does have our best spin and its bulk is its bulk is all right. Nothing uh, world like nothing like stunning or strong enough to be a tank, but it could be serviceable depending on the situation. But of course, it will be those Aqua Step Moxie that will keep my opponents in, like, in mind to be sure to not get sweeped at this thing. <laughs> Alright, now that I embrace my inner duck, now I needed some standard and some little backstory for the fourth pick. It was... Like, I was about to go to bed soon when it was not my turn yet, but it was like two... The person ahead of me next, and then me. I was like, eh, maybe I will not. Uh, it will. It will be my turn when I'll wake up, <laughs> like in the morning. So I slept at literally midnight. Then, for some ungod known reason, I woke up. It was 4 a.m. in the morning, <laughs> and when I saw that, I was like, I need to go to bed. But funnily enough, it has been four hours since I slept. I might as well just check just quickly if it's my turn to pick. And sure enough, it was my turn to pick. So, funnily enough, it was in fact my turn when I, when the moment I will wake up. <laughs> Not at the time I thought though. But, because I was on my phone and I didn't want it to log on my PC, I didn't have access to the dock because the dock is, uh, requires like our email, but my email isn't on my phone for some reason when I log into Discord. Or oh, whatever, I, I'm too busy to actually do it, whatever. So I had to check with uh, myself and remember what was pick and what was not pick. And remember some, what do I need? Well, because it was for, it was, well, I was still early in the draft and it was 4 a.m. in the morning. I was like, I don't have a fairy type. Maybe I can get one. So I checked, like, you know, the pool of fairy type. Because, you know, by doing, like, you know, this on Pokemon Showdown. I was like, yeah, there, there's some good fairy types, and I was like, uh, okay. I mean, I know it's round four, so I'm not forced to go for for them now. But do I really want them later? So I decided to just. So I check to see if it was still around. I want Clefable. Now, the last time I used Clefable, it was at a time where it was considered to, where it was like a like. A late round one, early round two picks, which, from what I remember, I didn't like that because the fable really felt underwhelming. But it's no longer that, so yeah, now it feels respectable to have at this point of draft. So yeah, it's very, uh, like average side wise, of course, especially with, especially on the special side. But it, the rest is like amazing about it. Fairy is a great typing. Magic Garden Unaware or two as well. The move pool is deep. Clefable they got hurt by losing. Uh, I mean, even if it got so well, it, didn't, it wouldn't matter because it would be a uh, APP just like Moonlight. But at least Moonlight isn't. I mean, Subway is is not weather dependent. I mean, depending on the sense that it's not affected by weather, so like it's not necessarily worse in the weather. I know Clefable has Wish, but if you want the full benefit of Wish, you need to use Protect, which costs another move, move slot. But besides that, it's very good uh, utility. It has coverage, it has support move. It's just the, it's just like, it's like a like a Swiss Army knife in a way. It will be able to do some stuff. It won't will not be the best at it, but it will be pretty good at it. Sort of like sort of, sort of like a pseudo mew in a way, like except it's less value. Well, as a sweeper, because it has no way to boost its speed, or at least reliably, because uh, otherwise it's just be blunder policy. But yeah, if anything, it will make my enemies annoyed because they have to deal with a Pokemon unaware. And yeah, that's about it for Clefable. So next, it was 
Then, for my fifth pick, this time I was at work. And I was trying, one I was on my break, it was my turn. I tried to look what I wanted before I need to go back to work. I was like, I didn't try our child on yet. I wanted to have our child on to try it. Sure, it will mean that Petron is, is currently my only favorite resist, but I can just grab a fire type to make it my second fire resist. So I dropped our child on, and when I went back to work, and then went on break again, I realized our child on was pick. Apparently, I missed the the message that Dell left when he said that he actually drafted our child on in the draft chat. I just went over it. So I had to make people wait longer because then I have to check for a new pick instead. But I stayed in the draconic Paldian vibe by getting back Scalibur. <laughs> which, funnily enough, is another Pokemon like Darkrai, which is kinda considered a fraud without, I mean, at least without Terra. Because, of course, it's a Dragon Ice type. It's a tech that is used. It's basically just like. It's some kind of an Axorus in a way, like, you have a high attack stat, your other style are pretty good, your speed is kinda average, or below at worst. But you do have some benefits, like, you have a secondary Ice Typing, which obviously gives you, like, you know, like, more coverage, you also get Ice Shard for priority with a, ha with a high base attack stat. Don't really shame me, you cannot be Burn, which is great for a physical attacker. Which also makes Backscalibur a great switch into Scald because it resists Scald and cannot be burned. And of course, you just have it's just a bunch of physical of strong physical attack. You have the signature Glaive Rush, which is the same base player as Outrage, but you're not locked in it, it's just that the next attack you take um, until you, you move, you take two times damage, which is fine with Ice Shard anyway. Or if you just Dragon Dance up and you just outspeed anything. Before that, of course, you have your coverage and earthquake, and like you know, other moves. It's just a strong, strong physical attacker that offers useful priority in Ice Shard, which is great for the potential dragons that could maybe face if Clefable isn't like good enough on its own. All right, next, I know I wanted some spikes because spikes are good. But I didn't know which spiker to get because not all of them were like useful in every situation. Like at least in the majority of the situation. But I found one that I thought was interesting to get. Chestnut. It's another Pokemon with good physical both, which is great to have alongside Petron, not having just one to take every physical hit under the sun. Its typing is also pretty good for a grass type. It makes it like, it gives it a resistance to rock, it's neutral to bug, so it can take on U-turn much better compared to a regular grass type. It gets the spikes like I wanted from it. It gets also the other moves like Knock Off, Leash Seed. Uh, also, it got Trailblaze this generation, so like Bulk Up, Trailblaze, Drake Punch, it can be a pretty fun set. Assuming I don't have to fight a very annoying flying type. And also, something else that is good about it is its ability Bulletproof. Because this Pokemon gives me an immunity to Shadow Ball. Like, it's not Ghost Resist, but Bulletproof makes it immune to Shadow Ball. And also moves like, you know, Slush Bomb, Focus Blast. So it, so it has good utility defensively outside of its typing. Like for the team, because currently, my Dark type is Darkrai. Which is not necessarily the frailest thing ever, but having it as... What I have to, to take on Shadow Ball is, lim is very limited. So having a Pokemon that is direct immune to Shadow Ball is great to have. Alright, next. I want my fire type because like I said because currently I don't have a second fire resist. Technically a steel type too, but at this point every steel type bled didn't feel like right for me to get. But for the fire type, Arcanine is I mean it's sweet Arcanine. You know. It's Arcanine, but with less speed, more attack, and a partial rock typing, and rock head for uh, no recall for flare blitz. I can type and head smash like this, or you know it can be like intimate day if I feel like it. Like you know, you know fire rock is not necessarily great at typing, but the planter, like the resist I get from rock, can be useful potentially to make Arcanine uh, hit the field. Also. Priority extreme speed, so I'm building up on priorities to reverse heal stuff, which is very important to have. So it can be a good choice craft user, or it can be an offensive stuff rock user even, or just support with Will-O-Wiz. 
like it not like something to be just stand around forever but like can be pretty annoying to deal with also but of course the strongest of our is of course being offensive like you know like choice band and just these moves that don't have recall it's just that pray you land your head smash so yeah. i never use arcanine is sweet uh, it's sweet arcanine i used arcanine before so using it over regular arcanine could be interesting for me and we'll see how good it does now, at this point, if you catch on why I got and left, I was starting to get low on point, and my draft wasn't still like the complete roster yet, so that that's a first. But beside that, there was something I needed, like more speed. Like my speed up to this point, beside the cry, is like now below 100, which is not great to have that cry be my highest speed tier. But luckily, Espeon was still around to fill that niche. Another strong special attacker with a speed, like 110 is pretty good to have, like the other Pokemon are near 100, so, that, so that's close enough, so 110 is great. Magic Bond is amazing to have, to potentially, like, like just the threat of Magic Bond is great for my friends like Baxcalibur and Arcanine, to n for not have them to be worried about Stealth Rock. So like, if I go just like a very aggressive team with SP on to prevent hazards, it can be good, or you know, it can be used to with some future side combination because it has a high special attack. Because so it has, it has Thunder Wave this generation, it has, a, it has some fairy coverage. That a bit limited what Espeon can do, but can be annoying if used it well. It also, if piloted in the right team as well. Alright, and now since I got Espeon, now my team was very hurt on point. I believe I only have like five points left for like at least uh, maybe at least one more big if I count correctly. I don't want to count, I'm too lazy. But yeah. But something I realized I didn't have a ground type. Which is bad because my points were hurting. So the best one I could get for my draft was Sand Slash. Now, is Sand Slash a great Pokemon? No, not really. Sure, it's it's these, the first three stats are all right. The rest are very meh, and, and like they're meh at best. Like sure, you have that gives me another Pokemon that can use spikes in case Chestnut isn't good enough. It has stuff like Super Fang, Knock Off, Gunk Shot. Like it offers value, but that doesn't mean it will be used a lot. But I think it is. It's still, it's still nice in case, like, it doesn't have to be, like, always here. Just the thought of potentially being able to use it is, is already in my book. I mean, I use, I use much worse than that in my work, so I don't see how Sand Slash would make it, uh, bad for me. Alright. And then last, I had one final point left. So I can, of course, do the most animal thing ever. And... Grab a just a little cup Pokemon that I will bring for one week and have just and just ruin someone's uh, someone's life with it or someone's day. But I decided maybe not this time. Well, this time we get a Noctowl. So I wanted to grab a Noctowl because well a flying type was also pretty good to have on this team. I didn't have one to like you know be into ground. And like Nauta was the best flying type I could find on the board, especially as a one pointer paired with Sand Slash. I mean, it has some. Say what you want about Nauta, it has some good stuff about it. It has Tintin Let's, so it's Hurricane when they land will not be resisted, so I could try out some kind of choice pack set. 86 is not big per se, but with a choice pack, it can hit much harder. Like, see? Like, look, look, look at. Uh, one second. Like, look, see? 298 with modest with choice specs that should that should hurt or even hyper voice like it's not gonna have one hit kill everything but it could tweak KO more stuff besides that it's, it has the fox so that's another Pokemon that can remove hazard if I want to maybe I will never use the fog knock tall but you know it's there it has nasty plot if I just feel like it it has agility so maybe I can try to do dual dance knock tall sweep I swept with much weaker than that, so there will be even be a surprise if Noctowl could pull up a sweep. But yeah, so there we go. Here is the trap analysis completed. 
So of course, I believe everything should be uploaded on Saturday each and every week. And hopefully this time we will get to be the champion. We were very close last season. I, ch I choke very hard in semis. So he hopefully we'll have a good season. And hopefully I'll be able to actually pull up more prep to for myself this season. Because I didn't really have the time. Uh, like in the previous like a uh, you know LTM but yeah also probably one last thing I want to mention like for the videos themselves I was thinking maybe this time I will tr I would just out the battle start immediately like it will start on team preview but in the description that I will post a a, vid a team building video that I think I will make it private because I don't know, I don't really want to have the team building video on the ch <laughs> showing up. Wait, it'll be private, but you can access it to really hear my thought about the matchup, what I'm bringing, what's, how the matchup felt. Like, I'll be able to go on full detail if I if I ever interest you guys, whether before or after the, the match was done. So yeah, that's all for me. That should be everything for me to talk about. And yeah, let's enjoy a good season. See ya everybody for next week.